Hello everyone, my name is Hunter's Rule Gaming here. Welcome to Let's Play Growing My Grandpa. Now, basically it's like Granny, but it involves Grandpa this time that was going to kill you. So this is another indie horror game that literally came out on Steam. It's actually version 1.2.15, actually. So, I think I have never seen this, but I try to actually make this into a full screen, but it wouldn't even let me, so... Here we are, we're doing the, this in blind, the window version of it, so let's see what we can expect from this. Would you like to view the tutorial regarding basic game mechanics? Sure, why not? Okay, please read this game. It's designed to be played with a mouse. The input required of you is based around clicking the mouse buttons. The right mouse button will change the cursor's image and function. Only when pointing indicated by the extended index finger uh, can you, the player, interact with certain menu buttons and prompts please click below in the pointing mode to continue all right the second cursor mode is indicated by the cursor's image featuring a hand extending all fingers this mode concerns interacting with objects inside the in the world mainly picking up an object and moving it into another position to continue please pick up the piece of trash on the right and place it in the trash can on the left. Remember the right mouse button will change the cursor's mode, but when holding something, the mode cannot be changed until the cursor is not holding something. Uh, okay. What do I do? Oh, there, what? Oh my God. Oh, oh okay. All right, that's what I do? Okay, that's it. Uh, there will be many situations in growing my grandpa that will require you to pick things up. Place things, grab things, or get things. Don't be afraid to experiment and keep an open mind about using your hand. Please click the button below to continue. Remember, menu buttons must be clicked in the pointer mode. Um, oh, there we go, okay. In order to expedite the cleaning process, you can use digits 1, 2, and 3 on your keyboard's number row at the top of the keyboard to reposition the trash can below. Try moving the can to the right of the screen. 3 on your keyboard in order to continue. Okay. So what do I do? Oh! Oh! Okay, that was good. Okay. Now, in order to expedite the cleaning process... Oh, okay. Okay, I've already read that. It says, well done. Please click the continue button to move on. And please remember, menu buttons must be clicked in the pointer mode. Uh, the variety of video options can be changed at any time through use of the function keys F3, 4, and 5. Press F3 to adjust or disable shader effects. Press F4 to cycle through display resolution options. Press 5 to change your cursor types. There are three cursor color schemes available, plus three left-handed -hand variants of each color scheme. By default, Growing My Grandpa's display is scaled up by a factor of two, and the shader is set at low. Okay, configuration. Okay, overlay. Uh, hovering over the small question mark in the top right uh, provides an overlay related to available configuration options. Try hovering over it. This will be av available at all times during the game. Okay? Thus ends the tutorial. I hope you enjoy growing my grandpa. Infinite thanks to my Patreons and supporters for believing in me and my work. Yamas. Is that the guy who made the game? Okay, week one. Week one, I believe. Alright. Whoa! Uh, okay. I excused Adrian, Adrian during music class today and spoke with her about a recent string of demerits. It was our first time meeting outside of our qu quarterly ev evaluations, and I believe it went well. I can certainly understand Mrs. Richardson's classroom observations concerning Adrian's emotional state. Uh, she was, of course, intensely shy when we first met. As I understand it, she is similar, similarly withdrawn 
in, in her classroom activities and only speaks or acts when she absolutely must. Something she simply will not do instead of participating in mandatory group activities, she will sit alone and accept that she will receive the de demerit. Before the meeting, I read Mrs. Richardson's parent-teacher report, which allowed me to estimate some about Adrian's home life. The parents are well-educated and some from prestigious background, but they lack time to properly nurture Adrian. As she is often alone, and when she is not, the parents seem to not understand the importance of warmth and affirmation uh, when dealing with, some, with someone so young. Having two parents of this reserved and icy temp temperament ex exacts an inhibit inhibition in the child. Uh, the, the child's imagination is subdued, but only uh, ostensibly, ostensi ostensibly for, for it eventually binds its way into regular life. I surmise that I would be able to, to reach out to Adrian by by the way of make-believe. Okay, how are you liking your new house? You told me uh, you used to live close by, but it's but it still can be a big adjustment. The new room, a new school. Uh, T, the basement, I like that. Uh, the basement? Yeah, well, there's a lot of cool stuff. Mom and Dad sent me down there. Uh, your mom and Dad made you go? Yeah, but there's lots of cool stuff. Well, well, that's not why they sent me down there, though. Why did they send you down there? Fighting. They were fighting, shouting. I came in to help, and they shouted at me. They said, go clean up downstairs. So I went. That sounds tough. Do they fight a lot? No. Well, they, uh... It's all right, Adrian. Maybe you can tell me more about the basement instead. Okay, well, it was weird at, fir at first. The stuff down there... Well, cool, I found something living, sort of. That's very interesting. Adrian, please tell me more. By indulging her in her fantasies and stories, I was able to glean more of an understanding of Adrian's anxiety surrounding her home and parents. The symbols of Adrian's stories seem to carry their own dramatic weight, and her explore exploration of the basement may very well be a vehicle for the conveyance of her anxiety. Uh, whatever might come of our next meeting, whether she will engage in similar make-believe, I will set down her story here. Adrian's story begins with her delving into the basement with a trash uh, recept receptacle and, and the goal of cleaning up. As she discovered one of the walls was covered in plastic bags, she went to investigate, intent on tearing away whatever they covered. Oh, whoa! Okay, the trash bags. Okay. Okay, there we go. Okay, I was supposed to click on that. What the fuck? Alright, what do I do? Oh, do I move the trash? Okay, I move the trash. Okay. So I did that. But I don't know what else to expect. Oh! Okay. I put that in the garbage. Okay, there we go. Upon removing the plastic trash bags from the wall, she noticed their interior lining was covered in glass. Like a window, I offer no, she said. Like a mirror. Reflecting inward towards the animal they covered. I gently asked her what exactly this animal was. Here is where the material reality of the story took a turn for the explicitly fantastic and imagery. Oh! Whoa, 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 whoa. What was that? What kind of that shitbag was that? Upon her discovery of it, at her gaze, it grew or extended its shaggy hair itself. Like, uh, hair like the fur of a dog. I am for no, she said. Not the fur of a dog, nor the hair on her head. It grew out towards her, the animal's hair reaching out. It was hard, standing almost straight, like the hair on the brush at Bristol. I offered yes, she said. She was very afraid at first, but then very curious. I asked her what else was in the room. 
More things hidden away, she said. Things of grandpa's as well. Uh, first, she found a hidden passage under the stairs. Inside were strange dolls, magic objects, naked, faceless figures. I heard these cryptic utterances and merely nodded. And in order to keep the game of make-believe going, I only pressed for details where I thought necessary. The faceless dolls could be a simple a metaphor for the an anonymity she feels in her own home. The hidden passage, I'm unsure of what to make of that. The revealing of the concealed seems to be thematic in her fantasy. The door under the stairs is but one example. Shit, okay. Here we, here we go. Okay, here we go. Now, let's go this way. Okay. Go back this way. Oh, yep, the darkness of the shadowy corner unnerves you. You cannot explore here without some form of light. Wow, that was weird. Let me try the other way. Hello, is there something else I need? Okay, there, there's a trash pile. All right. What do I need here? What is that? What's that under the chair? Never mind. Okay, what's that? Question mark? Okay. I guess I'm going back. All right, this shit here. Expect, guys. Um, I don't know where to find here. Okay. All right. Okay. What do I need here? What do I need here? Okay. All right. Please, I keep saying all right. Oh, here we go. And this one, there we go. Oh, finally figured that one out. I, yeah, it really took me like an enough minute to find that one out. Once she removed the panel and found the magical hidden passage, she was very sp sp specific about what she took. She found the magic book, a magic doll a photo of her late grandpa and magic glue. Whoa, hi! Okay, take doll search closet. All right. See what we get in here? All right. So what do we need here? The doll? Trash pile. Here we go. Okay. Going back. Whoa. What the hell? Okay. See what we got. All right. What do I need? Need to find more stuff in there. Take doll. Oh, okay. There we go. A sloshing doll, its material is rough and coarse. All right. And search the closet. Okay, see what we need. Okay, like that. Okay, need more? Holy shit. What is that? Okay. All right. Take a lot of... Oh my god, that is a lot of pile. Holy crap. Okay, there's a note here. Okay, oh, the photo of your late grandfather. Oh, read now? Okay, uh, on the on the reverse side of the photograph, there is more text. Good luck on your trip to the Aral. Stay warm. Oh, wow, 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 wow. Oh, 
Okay. That's another specific note right there. Oh, there we go. Okay. And read now. Okay. The interpret uh, interpret impetus of this research was the recognition of the particular pattern and fragments of documents relating to magic and magical re religious particles. Uh, numerous sources were drawn from commentaries on laws relating to the to the banning of sorcery and necromancy, compilations of folk charms relating, relating to love spells, uh, hagiographs of saints and their encounters with devils, the list spans many centuries and the great distance from the Levian to the Khazar Khaganate to the border of the modern nation states of Russia and Kazakhstan today. Forward, uh, from this paper trail uh, arose the consistent account about this certain form of magic relating to the binding of demons to the sorcerer's will. The demon called the Heaven of Needles, or the Angel of Needles, was known to be kept best by as shamanic keepers or words who suffer from the face blindness, which known as prosopognosnausea, whether by birth or through de de developmental causes like a stroke or head injury, it was known to be extremely effective but terribly dangerous, so much so that it became outlawed several times and it was generally a popular scapegoat relating to unexpected death. And forward. This next is a magical, magical religious, meaning making sorcery, uh, regarding human related desires and the history and science of neurological disorders related to the, to the fusiform gyrus is where the sus subject of this dis dissertation will reside. I will outline further and then analyze the historical sources I mentioned previously, then I will go into the neurology of mystic and magical religious experience experiences. After that, I will detail uh, my ongoing uh, correspondence with the residents of the Ural Mountain region, uh, who is an expert folklorist and, and the keeper of traditions he claims have been passed down through his extended family for generations. And oh, oh he gets a glue? There. Okay, the glue right here. Get okay, all the purpose glue. Okay, all clean. This space will not be only dirty again until next week. All right. Uh, I interrupted to ask what she did with these magical, mysterious materials. Grow Grandpa, she explained plainly. And then without missing a beat, she continued on with her story. Feeling this was a potent symbol, I stopped her again and asked what she meant. Somewhat puzzled, I did not understand immediately, she explained slowly. Grandpa lives in the cage in the under, other room, the cage behind the door. They grew people in the cage. Oh! All right. That doesn't matter. Let's go back. Something in here. Uh, something in here. Oh, yeah, maybe there's a door. Finally. Okay, there is a note here. Uh, can it read now? Okay, I have repeatedly called your homes to no avail, and so I am forced to leave this here for you all. I found William sitting in the corner of the enclosure area, seemingly severe, severely con uh, con 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 concussed. Whiskers was gone uh, in none of its usual hiding places. I immediately suspected the worst. The project thus must be suspended for now. I'm leaving up the usual mirror com coverings. We used to keep the anthro anthropoidic void sealed. I've done my best to lock up everything on such short notice. It, it is a hasty fix, but it will require some time to find a more permanent remedy. I, I am honestly hoping you do not find this note as I intend to lock the house down too. I intend to race off to you to retrieve your lockbox keys. Do not worry about William's key. It and the rest of his equipment is almost certainly deep within Whiskers now. I pray you do not enter this room. No matter how it may appear, William cannot be helped and, and is only being kept alive as a means of continuing predation on the rest of us. 
I will say once again, no matter what state you may encounter William in, he cannot be helped. I, I, I have sympathy for the young man. Truly, I truly do. But I found on his person several photos of his late sister, which would imply certain risk. He had risks he knew he was taking. Uh, our extent research materials have not become possible liabilities, either criminal or professional in nature, so I have stashed them away. I believe I'd let you all know how I might do this if, if we were ever to experience an event such as this. I hope you all remember what I told you. So long then, Dr. H. Okay. Enter? Yep, enter. Sure, why not? Beyond the door in the room, the cage was hidden, concealed in another cloak of inward-facing mirrors. Oh, wow, what is going on here? A hidden cage lined with mirrors. It is strange, most poetic, the elaborate fantasy of self-reflection, concealment, captivity. Okay, the tarp here. Okay, get those in there. Okay, what is that? Oh, there's another one. Okay, at the cage she finally cast her spell. But it was confusing, she co confided at first. As she took the magic doll, the magic glue, and the photo of her grandpa. And she combined them. And she wished very hard. I can only assume in this fantasy that next her wish would come true. In what child's story would it not? Oh, okay. That's what you mean? Okay, the glue. Okay, the glue. Oh, here we go. Okay, the particular... Uh, what if I do generic human figure? And the grandpa? Glue together. Alright, the, uh, the tangible symbol of intention and desire. Okay, that's what I can do. She put grandpa in the cage. Assuming that was part of the ritual. She was not clear on how it worked. Uh, what precise instructions uh, could she glean from her grandfather's magic book was complicated by her reading compre comprehension. She wished with all her heart, and then she told me she, she waited a while for something, anything to happen, and after that time, she began to cry. I cried really hard, she said. I, wa I wanted Grandpa to be back. I want my parents to stop being so mean. And it, and it hurt me. It hurt me wish for Grandpa to come back, for my parents to be different. I could feel it through the walls, and it felt me through the air. I asked her what exactly she meant. She, she could only repeat what she said. By this time, lunch was almost over. I said goodbye to Adrian. She left to, to, to rejoin her class. I, I was left to consider our conversation. I believe the storytelling strategy I have employed was not unfruitful, but I must probe deeper if I can. Although I can be sure of nothing I interpret, the impressions I get may begin to help me get an idea of the right questions to ask. Knowledge you acquire this week has given you access to certain topics or keywords you can discuss with Grandpa. You have gained the cover. Wish! Consider discussing this when Grandpa emerges. Wish. You have now gained the following keyword. Shell. Shell. Okay. So shell and wish. Whew. Well, that was really great. I will continue on more with growing my grandpa. That was really fun. Anyway, guys, uh, if you really enjoy the week one of growing my grandpa, just give us your thumbs up. Stay 20% cooler. Be ready for the real action, everyone. And we will see you then very, very, very soon. Bye-bye, everyone.